You're way too good for me. You goddamn geriatric. Oh yeah, this is what I'm here for. You and I were never a thing. The romantic plot lines and, and family I drama. Call me the Shapesmith. Perfectly normal human. Oh, it's college time. Wow. Did Debbie even go to his high school graduation? Push my baby bird out of the nest. It's a good thing I can already fly. <laughs> you can be okay, right? Mm, she's putting on a brave face. Anger is a part of it. Part of the grieving. Yeah, I... I know. So does the cupboard. <laughs> the cupboard found out about Debbie's anger and the grieving process. There's no one you can really turn to for counseling on this. Like, how? No one can relate. Well, I mean, Olga can relate, kind of. But generally speaking, no one can relate. And also, it's a secret. Debbie's doing a really nice thing for Mark, giving him a really warm-hearted send-off without any bitterness. She's a good mom. She really loves him. But it also feels like it's dangerous for her. From experience, it's always harder for the person not leaving. It's hard for the person leaving also, but that's softened somewhat by the excitement of the new place, having to adjust, having things to focus on. Debbie's just going back to her normal life. That she's already settled into, but without Mark. Mark's got classes, you know, all, all the other great things that are in college. Dorming, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> Survey courses, you know, he can find himself. Come to think of it, it's probably illegal for start, Mark to join a sports team. Enjoy every second of it. That's sweet. I love you, Mom. Mm. <laughs> and don't do drugs. Uh, no promises. <laughs> work on me. You do not need to find out. That's true, that's scary. But try it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Oh, it's a, you got a big hurt coming, Debbie. The worst part is when she gets home, opening the door. Ooh, I don't want to think about it. That sucks. I got your card from my friend Olga. My name is Debbie. Oh, yeah, 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 no, uh, sorry. No last names, Debbie. But Olga told me about you. I've been expecting your call. What is going on? This ambiguous card of helping. Could this be Olga's revenge? Help me out here, Mark. You already have a girlfriend. That's a big dorm room. Hero. I, on the other hand, am single and have no superpowers. And this is that TV college. Have to attempt game. This isn't helping. Maybe it'll just make you look better by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's on the door handle, like so, it means go eat a taco or fly to Spain or do whatever you have to do. But don't come in until the sock is gone. This is going to backfire. These kinds of things backfire. There's some stuff out here. Does it belong to you guys? Oh, toys. Uh, they're collectibles. <laughs> Only Mark. Look, Mark doesn't have to be in screw anything. He's he's the man. Those eager roommates trying to set ground rules. That backfires a lot of the time. Mark's going to be like, I am the one who socks. Oh, I can't wait to get into all the juicy temptations. <laughs> Amber, watch out. Mark's going to be a hot item on campus if he can hide his toys. I mean collectibles. No, don't doubt yourself, Mark. This is not the thing to doubt. This doesn't matter. No, my heart is broken. Oh, it's all right. Sorry, buddy. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, good. At least there's some, something left inside of his heart. Already? Okay, that did. First day of college. I was not I right. Know, Mark. I was wrong. My roommate doesn't arrive until tomorrow, so we have the whole place to ourselves. Uh, Look at these dorm rooms. I bought these. Okay. Is this their first time? Real. <laughs> you don't have like super sperm or something, do you? How would he know? How would he know? This feels a little bit forced. And you wouldn't accidentally crush me or something? Like if you get excited. These are the risks. Turn off the lights first. How'd you do that? That was amazing, given the positioning. And so, dear audience, perhaps it's time to give Amber and Mark some privacy and turn our attention to the stars and a story that began generations ago in this missive, this machination. What about Amber and Mark? <laughs> what are they doing? It's unclear. I was enjoying the teenage awkwardness for some reason. He could have just kept his collectibles. It would have made no difference. He could have had sex and collectibles. What a waste. We begin on the okay, this mission, Unopa, this machination, a peaceful and missive. Thriving world. The Unopans had achieved harmony with nature and technology. Until everything changed. When the Fire Nation attacked. The Unopans so, what's his name's planet? Andy? Who their conquerors were. The ones that lived quickly learned the name. Viltrumite. Viltrumite. Unfortunately, they still underestimated their oppressors. Wow, not even laser guns. You did this to yourselves. 
It's your fault. <laughs> Look at this. It's because of you, pests. Some Unopans were able to escape, abandoning their home for the stars and the promise of a new life. It's cool that they have that option. Impressed with the Unopans' survival and escape from a Viltrumite invasion, Thetis, the leader of the Coalition of Planets. Well, Mark gets to have sex and I get an alien history lesson. The breeding camps were also a genetic enhancement program. Designed uh -oh. <laughs> to breed a soldier that could defeat a Viltrumite in combat. Here we go. The results were not promising. Looks like something from Futurama. Alan. It's Alan, you're not Andy. The first and only success. Alan. Hell yeah, Alan. Alan still couldn't match even a single Viltrumite in combat. The program was considered a failure. That just creates a really beautiful arc for Alan. Because sometimes, to change the entire universe, you have to be... Alan. Oh, I knew it. I called it. Hell yeah. Oh, this is a Alan the, the episode? Hell yeah. I love Alan. <laughs> Alan's the man. Seems like he has a very nice disposition. Alan bears a rare and valuable gift for the Coalition. Hope. Big news, everyone. I found the right planet. Because it was the wrong planet you already found before. Sure, but that's not Most really... of our agents don't make so many astronavigational mistakes. And they're just Since jealous Spartan, of Alan. Is it still a mistake if it ends up saving the universe? Yes. Oh, I know the type. I thought about this not in the context of Alien War, but what it must be like to be at war with something just unimaginably more powerful and bigger than you. The amount of fear you're stomaching on a daily basis. I wonder if you ever get used to it. And get this, after they fought, his dad left. Like, left the planet, disappeared completely. We can never trust one Only of imagine what Mark is like up to other now. Other right, this is the reaction I expected. His voice sounds very familiar. Is this Seth Rogen? It is Seth Rogen! Wow, very distinct voice. Viltramites do not battle each other, but a son defies his father. These are weaknesses. The first we found and ones we must learn to exploit. I was just about to say that. Thank you, Great Thetis. I'm honored to serve. Okay, their position is understandable. This is a war, they need tools. Mark is a, well, human being. He's not a tool and I don't think he would react well to being used as a tool. It's difficult to approach in a way that works. They could just easily alienate him, so to speak, by having him be another tool. I mean, it's not that much different from how his father saw him to some extent and what Vilkermites are. I mean, they haven't met Mark. Some of that's understandable. Like, people don't really have that much reality until you've spent time with them. But there's nothing about their conception of Mark that allows for his humanity and his own choices, which if I was Mark, I wouldn't like. I mean, even if I agreed with their cause. Just in general, I don't believe in aligning with groups anyway. I don't want to align myself with a side. I mean, it's probably the most strategic thing in a lot of situations. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it if I wanted something badly enough, but there's something about it that's a little bit icky to me. I think you want to align yourself with causes primarily and then groups or people you associate with are downstream of that it gets a little bit weird when you lose sight of that and the thing you're aligning with is the group because groups are made up of people who you know they run the spectrum of good and evil just like all groups probably just like the enemy you're fighting and goalposts change real motivations are hidden and revealed to the last minute people will use causes for their own personal gain you got to be careful what you're fighting for though the goal of groups and organizations is to make you think it's about the cause and we'll often use these binary parameters as tools like if you are not supporting our group specifically, it means you support the opposite cause, which is clearly evil. If you're not with us, you're against us, that kind of thing. It's an interesting thing forming for Mark because there's this this play on the duality of people's expectations of him, both positive and negative, and Mark's discovery of himself and who he really is and what his values are. Mark himself being a partial perpetrator of the whole expectations thing, you know? Like, I'm not my father, is partly concerned that he is, in fact, his father. If there are other Viltramite kids out there, maybe we can turn them against their parents, too. Also, why are they breeding with other races? I thought Viltramites believed in racial purity. Yeah, come to think of it, Omni-Man breeded with his pet. Alan, before you depart, a word? What's Thetis's deal? I find it convenient and somewhat alarming that Acreon was hit so soon after joining the Coalition. Got a spy. There's an insider. Ah, Alan. You continue to prove yourself the Coalition's most valuable asset. This could be sincere. It could also be manipulation. This guy's leader for a reason. It's unclear exactly what those reasons are. He could be the mole. Cause my paranoia is off the charts this episode. Hey, Vorg. Hey, little buddy. Did you miss me? Just like my cat. I missed you. Yeah, how much? The most. Or like 10 times that amount. Maybe more. That's a lot. That's a high number. Oh, let's see if that's true. 
All right, I guess this is where we cut back to Mark. I, uh, perhaps now would be a good time to return to Earth and rejoin Amber Bennett and Mark Grayson. Yeah, admittedly, I'm less interested in that scene. At the prestigious Upstate University. Oh, it's Upstate University. That explains it. Let's not do that then. Surely you have other characters. Oh man, I have been dying for this. Oh. Sure. Aliens. <laughs> Her food is eating his food. <laughs> that's unique. I think Korea, they eat bundegi. It's like insect pupa, but they're not alive. And come to think of it, that sort of disappeared from the street food scene over the years. Shockingly. You're the traitor. Something on your mind, traitor? No matter how far I travel, Telescria is still the most beautiful planet I've ever seen. There's hundreds of planets that look exactly like it. Yeah, sure. but you're not listening. But only one has you. Oh! Hey, what did they just want to talk about after the council meeting? Um, <laughs> look, I'm not really supposed to, uh... Keep working love separate. Okay, okay, fine. No, Alan, no, you're too nice. I am supposed to... What? <laughs> what the hell happened? It's a good thing Alan can breathe in space. Are these Vilkermites? You will tell us everything about your encounter with the Vilkermite of Earth. I mean... I wonder what this is the Omni-Man standing with the Vilkermites. Where is the father now? The father. Which one was he again? You Pyclops all kind of look the same to me. I mean, they all have mustaches. That is a way of just framing the face. Don't tell me they're got me attached to Alan just to kill Alan. Turns out that in space, we can only hear Alan's screams. Oh. Why did you do this to me? This was supposed to be a fun Alan episode. His poor cat. I hope someone feeds it. Wait, he can still survive. He can still survive. He can still survive. He can st uh, I don't think he can survive that. That was really... Sad. Terrible. Oh yeah, I forgot it's invincible. Things were going so nicely. Up until now, the only casualty was the cupboard. Oh, he can survive! He can live! Oh, that's a huge relief. Their technology is amazing. It's one of you. The Viltramites must know we've discovered something. Something that scares them. And we will exploit it. Always with the exploiting this guy. I will watch over him. Oh, uh, don't leave him alone! Don't leave him alone! We don't know who the mole is. Oh, don't rip this away from me. Oh, you- it's you. I knew it was you the whole time. Forgive me, Alan. No one will forgive you. Wow, that episode flew right the hell by. Come on. <sighs> Two Come on. more. Two more. <sighs> <sighs> Imagine walking into a room like, ugh. Aggressive much? Wait, but Alan, can- Okay, I think Thaddeus is underestimating the Uniclus will to survive. Alan's too good of a character to go out like that. Wait a minute, there's still 20 minutes left in the episode. Why did we have credits? Oh, it was credits on the, the Alan section. I thought that felt a little bit short. Oh yeah, this is what I'm here for. The relationship drama. The immortal's like 2,000 years old, you know. So is Freerin. This is a healthy relationship. Oh, asshole. Well, how is that news? Look, there. <laughs> come on, Kate, talk to me. What is this about? Oh, sincerity. The immortal's the only person I've ever met who's died as many times as I have. Oh. Maybe you don't understand that? It's dark. But it means something. He gets it. He's also really hot. Not your gym, dickbag. What, are you going to knock my teeth out again? Don't be a jerk, Ross. Again. Too late. Uh, at least I'm not a cheater. But you literally are. But that was before. Ugh, I'm not now. <laughs> because it's convenient. There's a very real relationship karma that exists. It's not a death sentence. It's not impossible to overcome, but it's just something to consider. It's a real force. What you are tends to influence what you receive in two key ways. One, even though it doesn't always feel this way, the type of person you are largely determines the type of person that you attract. That sounds obvious, but in some ways it's not obvious. You don't know necessarily what that is in your day-to-day -day life. Because we mostly see from our point of view, we tend to over-extrapolate what is normal, what other people are doing based on where we are. Also, our behaviors, our activities, like, you know, for example, if you meet a lot of partners at bars and clubs or what have you, those people probably are already similar enough to you that you're filtering. Like there's a reason you're both in the same place at the same time doing the same thing. And two, in a way your expectations of what other people are doing tends to filter 
the actions of other people. So like if you have a history of duplicitousness, let's say, even if you've ceased that behavior, you've now like awoken yourself to how easy it is, how natural it is, or might be to some people like it was to you to engage in duplicitous behaviors. And so you just start seeing that in the actions of everyone, which likely creates a strain on the relationship if you know, you don't get that in check, which pushes people away, which ceases to reward them for good behavior. And in fact, punishes them for good behavior, if it is good behavior, and makes it more likely that they too will engage in duplicitous behaviors. There's just something about that that transfers. And even if they're not like you, it's easy to convince yourself that they are. And so you will essentially live in that hell. Let's say you are seeing someone who has a partner and they express a desire to leave their partner for you. Well, the question immediately arises, when will you leave me for the next best iteration? In that situation, you also carry the baggage of having to always know you are the replacement. So there's like an extra amount of burden and baggage there. Like you have to justify it as opposed to, you know, an organic meeting of two people with no engagements. Oh, hello, but she's still chums. interested. I'd like to run while remaining in a stationary location. Is that cool beans? <laughs> Where are you from? Mars. Well, this is no vetting process of eating a light bulb whatsoever for, you know, the Earth's preeminent Euro League. I'm going to find my fear <laughs> neurologically and destroy it because that works. Neuroscience, the solution to all our psychological problems. If I could just find out where in my brain it is physically, I could eliminate it. Is that your brain? Uh, yes. Stop looking at my brain. You're going to make me ask, aren't you? Please don't. I set up this visual feedback system so I could practice controlling my fear response via meditation and active thought. That's cool, actually. People feel fear for a reason, and it's usually a good reason. Well, fear in their line of work, it is a great reason. extraneous emotion that serves no real purpose for someone like me. I strongly disagree. Have fun next time you fall off a cliff or something. I would agree, like, in any other case but his. Like, it's so right. Just like, the, the way most people experience fear, this totally non-life-threatening thing, you know, social embarrassment, fear of failure, it's really just an outdated mechanism that at one point did serve a very important function, but does not fit our current aspirations. It's not at all suited to meeting one's potential, it's, it's suited for survival, which is already, you know, we've pretty much gotten that down. There's way less physical danger in our natural environment now than there once was, for which those responses were programmed. You don't want to optimize your life around feeling like everything is a game over event, because it's really not anymore. I don't know if universally eliminating fear is the right answer, but recognizing that it's an overreactive thing and not letting that be the final decider is really useful, except for like actual life threatening situations. Like the cliff thing is valid, but I want to see where it goes. Well, anyway, if he's fallen off the cliff, he's already fallen off the cliff. So fear doesn't really help there anyway. I love how he's got all this high tech stuff and the, the brain model and his answer is still meditation and breathing exercises like a human. Fear hasn't just made me useless in battle. It's prevented me from doing something else I've wanted to do for quite some time. Oh, this meditation is paying instant dividends. Confession. Will you a movie with me? A uh, movie? I thought they were already a thing. They talk about the physical symptoms of grief, depression, lethargy, all that. Uh, but spouses of superheroes. It's a support group. All goes true revenge. I still miss her so much. That's all I got. I bet if I was paying more attention, I, I could guess some of these spouses. Wait, what did she erase? Oh, oh, that hurts. That was a good delete. He's just having a good time, which is what you want. Don't take this the wrong way, but there's a bar down the street some of us like to go to after group. Oh. Yeah, I just figured Do they have it wine? seems like neither of us wants to go home, but no pressure, of course. Yeah, no, this is, I know this feeling like it's kind of a dangerous space to be in and you hate going home. You just find any reason to not go home and then you're not like being very selective about your activities. It basically leads to bar is what I'm saying. Like at nighttime, there's only so much you can do. And then it's just obvious how that spirals. This also might sound obvious, but I think it's when you're feeling the worst that you're in the most danger of trading long-term health, long-term benefit, long-term reward for just short-term gratification, but like to its maximal level to the point where it's destructive. There's that saying that to those who have more will be given and to those who do not have everything will be taken. This is like one uh, life-like example of that. If things are really going good and you're okay in the moment, you're way more all right with not gratifying immediate impulses, thinking longer term, being patient, building stuff, foregoing pleasure for a greater reward. If you have nothing to look forward to, if you have no excitement or fulfillment ahead on the horizon, what else is there to do 
but basically hedonism. That's why you sometimes find that people in worse financial positions spend more money than those in better financial positions. People who have less time they should be devoting to leisure spend more time on leisure. I feel on a gut level how scary, how crushing, soul crushing it would be for Debbie to go home. I mean, that was my first instinct when she dropped Mark off at school. The house is a monster right now. It's got a soul that you can feel. This is more of an aside or maybe too specific to match this point, but sometimes I think like uh, one major tool in life is just having a place you like going back to and things that you like doing that are healthy. Come to think of it, I've never been in a support group, but that would be a danger of them, right? Someday you'll have to tell me all about your childhood. Oh, we're already seeing a horror movie tonight. <laughs> well, I got jokes for a robot. You need your parents to buy you R-rated tickets. That's ridiculous. How it is ridiculous. Presence change a film's suitability <laughs> for the underage. Oh no! Why am I relating to the robot? It's fine. They're my kids. They can see the movie. Oh, you're, thank you, lady. Oh, she paid. If this is your first movie. What other normal stuff haven't you done? You've never been to Burger Mart? They're everywhere. This is supposed to be appetizing? Yes. So it's the guy who used to eat food through his butt. That's not how it entered through my... It doesn't eat your sandwich. <laughs> I know these aren't good for me, but... It's great for you. Shut oh, up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Monster Girl. one of the greatest pleasures in life. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm discovering that. It's the point of living. Waiter, uh, more fries, please. Rudy. It's Burger Mart. There's no waiters in Burger Mart. He and the Martian parasite should team up. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, the danger of support groups. I, I don't know. I'm speculating. Maybe it's a wonderful thing. I can imagine it overall being very positive, but there's a danger, right? Because then it ends and you're with a lot of people who like are not in the best place and you're also not in the best place. How do you escape that cycle? Like the support group is just, well, it's an hour or two, but then <laughs> you have the rest of your life. You have the whole evening. There's gotta be safeguards there, I feel. I would, this is me throwing myself under the bus. Like if I was going to a support group for something that I have trouble with, the support group would just be another way for me to enable myself. Your mind tricks you like that too, for real. Like in a last resort, when you're going through like with withdrawal or something like that, your subconscious will mask your plan to engage in the activity with a positive thing. So your rational brain will be like, well, that makes perfect sense, but you know deep down what's gonna happen. It's like, oh yeah, I'll just meet my drinking friend for a non-drinking activity, that'll be fine. Deep down knowing full well that as soon as your non-drinking activity ends, your drinking activity begins. Did did you move after your partner passed away? I moved the furniture. Couldn't afford to relocate. You? I stayed for my son, but... Another house I someone doesn't want to go back to. Maybe it's time for a change. Probably should change your house, yeah. I wish I could tell you it gets easier, but Alana's been gone nearly a year, and I still reach across the bed for her every morning. Alana? You mean... Yeah. Wait, is that Wonder Girl? She was the green ghost. Oh, oh, the green ghost. The one who got punched through the face. Whoops. Oh yeah, Omni-Man created a lot of support group attendees. I need to use the restroom. Are you okay? No. It's not, Amber. We made plans for tomorrow night. <laughs> I bet you did. Mark Grayson. Okay. The hell? Mark Grayson. What? Who are you? Why, it is I, Seance Dog. Nah, you're not real. He's a comic book character. In your dimension, yes. But there exists myriad other worlds where dogs and magic are as real well, imagine as you breathe. Well, beating your real dogs. comic book hero. Dogs are real. Well, then you're halfway to understanding. <laughs> Open your mind and let me help you reach the other side. Demonstrate your powers. I come because... <laughs> No, don't fight Saiyan's dog. Hear him out. Mark goes straight, always goes straight to the punching and fighting. Not enough listening. Oh no, don't do that to Saiyan's dog. This is more heartbreaking than the time, heartbreaking than the time you threw him away in the dumpster. Oh, he looks so sad. Don't give me those puppy dog eyes. You get to demonstrate something. I'm say, yeah, this is what Saiyan's dog does, right? Okay, it's not Seance Dog. My disguise was meant to Mark design. was right. I was fully ready to believe that it was Seance Dog. <laughs> Who the hell knows? It's got multi multiverses. It's plausible. I would have totally gotten fooled by Seance Dog. But the puppy dog eyes, they were so real. The journey to your world has taken me most of my life. May I rise? How do you know who I am? Rumors of the one they call Invincible have spread like wildfire. Your speed, your strength. You are the only one who can save our people from the meteor showers destroying our world. Well, I guess they just okay, don't live listen. very long. Um, Nualzad. No, I'll <laughs> oh no. How many bug people are in danger? All of them. But like a number. Oh, 42 billion. Wow. Last time you didn't want to help someone, we both regretted it. 
We believe it's more important than whatever racing. survey class you have lined up for the morning. Just read the notes. Or better yet, just skip it. I won't be more than a few weeks, a month. God, months, it was bad enough depending on thinking about 24-7 on Earth. You got all these planets, too. You work for me here on Earth. Okay, Cecil. This is an order. Do not go. Nah, we're going. I need to listen to myself before I listen to you. Good. Your father felt the same way. I can lay off it. God damn it, Mark. Fucking kid. This is not about Mark. This is about Cecil. He lost all feelings of power and control. And he also blames himself. Hey, when I'm in this outfit, I'm invincible. So far. No, I'm saying, like, you have to call me invincible. It's like a secret identity. Oh, right. Of course. Wait, the whole universe knows about his identity? That's terrible. It's just a matter of time. Never apologize for saving lives. This is the deal, and I'm good with it. Go. Wow. Thanks. Yeah, that's really amazing. Amber, I, uh... Um... Yeah? I love you. Well, did that get through or not? Always, well, you might be worrying about her in college. Hey, how long until we get to Thraxa? Approximately six of your Earth days. Not bad. Six days, most of his life. Will he even be alive on arrival? <laughs> Debbie. Are you okay? No. <laughs> Come on, dude. He's gone. Because... Because he murdered Alana and the other guardians. Oh, wow. Okay, it's all coming out. He was Nolan Grayson, but that wasn't true. Uh, the last 20 years of my life know, have been a lie. Oh, uh, okay. It's breaking. I wish he was dead. I wish I could grieve. It would be easier. If he was dead, it'd be a lot easier, yeah. You shouldn't come back to the group. Cold. Wouldn't be a safe space with you there. Nah, that's, you're, you're a jerk. I didn't know it's not Debbie's who fault. he was. You should have. Well, I mean, Delby will have some guilt there because she kind of suspected something was up. I mean, late, late in the game. That sucked. You know what? I think you dodged a bullet. All being told. Is that what you wanted? You want to just go to the bar with this guy every day? Invincible. Huh. We're here. You all better be worth saving. This better all be legit. Hi. Speaking of looking similar. The monarch wants to meet you at once. Look at cute little Amanda's kids. Where are the meteors? Meteors? What meteors? Oh, come on. Six days of my life. Okay, Mark, it's time to become your father and just wipe out this planet. Um, what is going on? Hello, son. What? No, they can shapeshift, though. In a while. No way. No way. Not real. Dad? I'm more willing to believe... In Necrodog, then I am. No way. I mean, I hope it is Omni Man. I'm really curious what he's up to. Like, he can't go back to Klaxon, but he can't go to Earth either. What does he want now? What's the plan? And there are hints that he misses his family. That's a steep road to climb. That's a tough redemption arc. But, like, yeah, what do you want if you're Omni Man at this point? As crazy as I am, I, I actually want Omni Man to reform because I think that would be the most challenging and most interesting. But <laughs> it's Omni Man. Though, like, given season one, taking over Earth seems kind of small scale. Working just in favor of his planet seems small scale. Maybe it's one of those Star Wars rule the galaxy father and son type deals that seems to fit in someone like omni-man's wheelhouse i mean assuming it even is him